Uh, oh yeah, Left for Dead, the tragedy of Back for Blood. Oh, it's the dolls. Fuck off, you guys. Why do you always bring up the dolls? Fuck off. <laughs> Every time it's y'all, every time something spooks me, it's like, it's the dolls. Fuck off, you guys. You guys make me paranoid as hell. Stop. Let me just watch these vids. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is by uh, Gamers. I just call them Gamers, even though they fucking have a V where the A is. Uh, they do some pretty good um, videos for this kind of thing, where it's like mini docs. Sleepy is only the truth. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's see what they gotta say with this. Uh, it's so sad, too. I was so hyped for Back for Blood, and... Like, I did have fun playing with you guys. And it did feel better after they fixed the difficulty thing. But by then, the hype was gone, and they just did <clears throat> everything else with it. It was just... Sad. Like, it had so much fucking potential. I was just ugh. But yeah, let's see what let's see what this video is gonna be. How it's going to go. Ah, oh, this is gonna get bad. The Trailblazing Left for Dead and its 2009 sequel redefined cooperative shooters carving out a new path in the genre that later paved the way for countless co-op-centric experiences. Despite their best efforts, though, no development team could recapture the unique thrill of zombie killing in the Valve owned franchise. Yeah, one of the, the okay, I'm just going to say it before they probably bring it up. Uh, I don't know if they will. But one of the things a lot of people loved about Left 4 Dead, besides, you know, the game just being fucking fun to play either by yourself or with friends or with strangers even, it's just... One of the main things that people loved about it was how moddable it was. Is that a word? I don't know. But how the community could put so much into the games. Left 4 Dead 1 and 2. Like, the characters are unique and slash stereotypical as well. But, <laughs> like what you had you had interesting characters people liked you had interesting gameplay you had interesting verses you had interesting story you had a very and again i'm not sure if this is the right word to use but it was very moddable it was very community based like it was very community friendly like, even to this day, people are still modding the shit out of those games. And it's just... When Back for Blood came out, it, they before it even released, they made sure to tell everybody how unmoddable it was going to be and that they don't want that shit. They don't want the community to make shit. They're going to make you buy every single thing that they shit out. And it's like, no. This is not Left for Dead. This is not a spiritual successor to it. This is not the same vibe. That is the only reason your game got any attention was because of your very vague, very slim attachment to the Left 4 Dead series. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, even without the mods, Left 4 Dead games were still good. They were still enjoyable. But with how Valve made the games uh, so open to community creation was just like a very big step into making it still relevant today. And that bitch has been out for like 10 bajillion years. 20. 30 bajillion, like 500 bajillion years. Listen, 2020 was a long ass time, all right? Part of my soul is still stuck in 2020, so I can't tell time anymore, but you know what I mean. Anyways, let's let's watch the video. 
regular support on Left 4 Dead 2 marked the end of an era. A much coveted Left 4 <coughs> Dead 3 wouldn't reinvigorate things either, leaving other studios with the task of carrying the torch. But the likes of Killing Floor 2 and World War Z, while admirable in their own right, uh, I did enjoy Killing Floor, which came before. With the industry searching for a comparable zombie experience, Left 4 Dead's original it did not give me the Left 4 Dead vibe. To revisit the genre through the lens of a new IP, Back for Blood. Build as Left 4 Dead's spiritual successor, Back for Blood followed the same basic structure, pitting up to four playable heroes against zombie hordes in campaign and competitive modes. However, developer Turtle Rock Studios switched gears in some respects, crafting more capable protagonists, introducing card-based progression, and updating the classic L4D formula with modern systems. The anticipation ahead of Back for Blood's debut suggested the beloved zombie series had truly returned via another name, yet the former's October 2021 release left much to be desired. Content-related shortcomings and a handful of technical woes plagued Turtle Rock's new property during its first few months on the market, <laughs> resulting in a rapidly declining user base that never returned to full strength. This is the tragedy of Back for Blood. Can I watch this one look at it after this? I mean, yeah, sure, just send it to me through Discord or whatever. This video has been brought to you in part by Naraka Blade Point. Oh my god, these sponsorships, y'all. Someone sponsor me, goddamn. It's been like months. With a unique melee focused fighting I'm, system I'm and hero skills. Sponsor the Battles fought are up close and personal with limitless combat possibilities. Each of Naraka's I tried to play that game, but it, it felt clunky as hell. Dynamic moves and powerful combos that coupled with the I didn't like vibe with it. It was just you to predict your enemy's next moves, eh. make winning more tactical Like I tried to give it an honest leader. try, but Right now, Naraka is hosting a crossover event with Wo Long, and both games are free on Xbox Game Pass. In addition, Naraka allows you to join various in-game events to secure Wo Long-styled cosmetics for free, including General Lubu's mask. <clears throat> And owners of Wo Long will be able to claim characters of Naraka in upcoming DLC. Okay, I'll take a look it's at it after this. It's the of the Tiger. It's the thrill of the fight. And it's Naraka's new champion, Akos. The first hero in Naraka who's able to transform into a beast and tear up anyone dance. on the battlefield <laughs> okay. with fast and cunning precision. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description to try out Naraka Blade Point entirely for free from March 15th until the 19th on Steam, Epic, or Xbox with Game Pass. The game will also be 50% discounted on Steam and Epic between March 15th and 21st. We'd like to thank Naraka for sponsoring this video. This way, people! Reloading! Damn it, Bill! <laughs> After shipping the original Left 4 Dead as a Valve subsidiary in late 2008, the California-based Turtle Rock Studios stuck around for a while longer to help produce Left 4 Dead 2 DLC. The company regained its independence in 2011. By the way, it was wild because if I remember like, but right, the Left, um, 4 Dead Left 4 Dead 1 Fortunately, the team once was such a hit that Valve wanted a Left 4 Dead 2 quickly. So literally evolved, like a year later, Left 4 Dead 2 came out after Left 4 Dead 1, which was fucking fast. Power. It's online server shutting down a mere three years after release. Turtle <clears> World <throat> had no intention of giving up on cooperative games, however. Speaking with your God, I fucking remember evolving the Ashton fucking said, memes and the fucking rage over this game. To revisit the co-op zombie space. More than anything, the crew wanted a second chance at the genre and hoped the public was just as ready. No one within Turtle Rock had any interest in simply retreading old ground either. Changing the attitude of zombie-laden horror seemed far more inventive, allowing for the rejection of tales where dire circumstances steered the narrative to instead concentrate on what would come after the apocalypse. In short, the Left 4 Dead creator focused its efforts toward fighting against the typical end-of-civilization motif, an attempt at clean-slating the genre with fresh ideas while simultaneously embedding the moment-to-moment <coughs> -moment feel of it a Turtle had a fun Rock Yeah, that's the thing. Doing it's so like, necessitated what Back for Blood the proved is that they have the, left for dead. They have for one, the potential to make games that had a very good concepts and could have been good. 
who also bore an immunity to the parasite responsible for Back for Blood's undead hordes. The immunity engendered a different overarching objective as well. While Left for Dead survivors searched desperately for a safe place, the cleaners prioritized creating safe places. Ultimately, the developers weren't driven to reinvent the wheels so much as they aimed to enrich the genre by pushing it forward. But crafting a richer experience still reigned supreme, an idea made manifest through a larger scope, expansive cooperative features, and a deeper narrative <coughs> whose environmental storytelling benefited from eight playable characters, each of whom inspired multiple playthroughs given their disparate responses to certain events. And yet, Turtle Rock's biggest changes to its previously crafted tried-and-true formula reared their heads throughout their core systems that powered the action in Back for Blood. <laughs> yeah, it's anything but fresh. It's like... Smaller, I can't but not really totally think of anything specific that comes to mind how it'd be Adventist called fresh and innovative. And the, sites, the latter of which bolstered the addition of weapon attachments. Yeah, the it was bland. That largely went unchanged, at least conceptually, was the AI director, or as Back for Blood dubbed it, the game director. Not too dissimilar to his counterpart. Like when we played it, like could I could feel the potential it had. I could feel it, and it just made it sad. Well, I mean, maps, more sad <laughs> and based that it on had potential. Behavior. It wasn't just a Notably, bad game. It was one that could have been great. Most prominent feat: card-based progression. Turtle Rock Studios <clears> breathed <throat> life into this transformative card mechanic later in development, then iterated on the feature for no less than a year and a half. According to lead designer Brandon Yanez, regularly playing the game led he and Chris Ashton to question how users could influence the title's RNG, or random number generator. Rather than leave every game-changing decision in the game director's invisible hands, the pair thought allowing players to make their own choices would liven up the action, hence the card and progression system. Earlier iterations of the card concept were shelved during production. In a rock paper shotgun interview, Yannis recalled Turtle yeah. Rock's experimentation with scavenge cards. It's also not very memorable. Around the world for users to uncover. Much confusion grew out of this particular setup, with playtesters struggling to identify that resources like bandages spawned from their collected cards. The team scaled back scavenge cards as a result, concentrating on bigger item drops such as the combat knife, which swapped out the unarmed bash attack for a heavier blow with a melee weapon. The progression system received plenty of fine-tuning throughout its 18 months or so of development. Even so, playing the optimal deck with the right character, weapons, and attachments could provide the means for an overpowered placement. <clears throat> Though Yanis insisted a great deal of balancing went into ensuring OP runs didn't become the norm. Fine-tuning Back for Blood's cooperative foundation went hand-in-hand -hand with fleshing out the progression mechanics. As Ashton told Polygon, progression systems typically prioritize the individual and, in doing so, divided teammates. The zombie game's developers chose a different route, one wherein progression features based around co-op could bring squad members closer together, as opposed to tearing them apart. It hardly translated to the preference of individual users being cast aside. On the contrary, cards were designed in such a way that players could customize cleaner builds to their likings, be it a healing-focused or tank-oriented hero. Yet, in spite of its investment into deep functionality, Turtle Rock made room for very accessible gameplay options. A classic mode boasting basic cards removed from the necessity of perk cards was instituted for those who simply wanted to have fun with a co-op zombie shooter. In some cases, yeah, fun people just wanted to have fun. I know, wild. So much of the heavy lifting. With WB Games attached as publisher, Turtle Rock Studios took the industry by surprise upon announcing a new IP in a March 2019 press release. The team used an FAQ post to preemptively mitigate any confusion about suspected Left 4 Dead the card system. Yeah, I didn't quell talks and headlines or on message boards of Back for Blood. I wasn't really into it. Successor. Naturally, this line I could have gotten over it if it was just incredibly high expectations. Which reached the stratosphere when less the game of a stressful a cinematic trailer and game build a pack thing. I was like, I just let me Game shoot Wars. zombies with my friends. Reporters who enjoyed hands on time with the title couldn't help but draw comparisons to Left 4 Dead, thanks in large part to the analogous creature designs, yeah. settings, core yeah. gameplay tenets, and Same AI Phoenix. director like Overseer. It made sense on paper, 
like many seasoned studios, like I know, I know some people like the card system, not owning the rights to its in games, or uh, are into that kind of thing, an older premise or don't mind it. But it, for me, it's like if it's not done Still, right or simply, held out hope for Left 4 Dead it's just like it's more of a game. hindrance. So the instances where Back for Blood followed a path all its own were not always met with resounding applause. Its live service elements initially caused quite the uproar among prospective players, especially when Turtle Rock confirmed an always online requirement that even applied to solo mode. Acknowledging the criticism in a Eurogamer sit-down weeks ahead of release, company co-founder Chris Ashton said developers were investigating the possibility of an offline mode for a post-launch update. The executive tempered expectations, though, and made no promises given the difficulties involved in seeing the task through to completion. Because Turtle Rock yeah, that's also one thing I didn't like is that they didn't have like an offline mode. Side, it too would necessitate <clears throat> management offline for a dedicated offline mode. Wading through the ins and outs, like it was hard to just play it by yourself. Questions. Chief among them being whether players who didn't connect to the internet should gain access to all of the game's available cards or none at all. The team solved. The yeah, see, this is why it makes it just release. so much bullshit. Yet, the lead up to launch still saw the co-op shooter sitting on the sour end of Left for Dead comparisons. One of the most disappointing revelations came during the early access preview, as players learned Back for Blood lacked a mode equivalent to the Valve titles uber popular versus. Turtle yeah, Rock's people fucking love the versus. Instead revolved around Swarm, an eight-player PvP offering somewhat akin to its predecessors, Survival Mode. Ashton informed fans on Discord that the reason for such an omission came down to the sheer amount of defensive equipment in game. Defending worked far better for our game than running from A to B, the executive wrote. Considering the differences between Back for Blood's special ridden creatures and Left 4 Dead's traditional zombies, the decision made sense. Dissatisfaction weighed heavily on the community regardless, with some hopeful players arguing that Turtle Rock didn't understand its audience. After a four month yeah, let's delay, not lie and say they didn't rely heavily on the whole Left 4 Dead hype content. train thing. WB Games and Turtle Rock like, let's not for blood on pretend consoles, they weren't PC, using that, alright? Of course you're being compared to Left 4 Dead. The final product you're the one that the hyped that train. At least had some idea of who would invest in their new IP. However, the title short-term successes did not guarantee long-term gains. That's all for today. But Back for Blood still has a lot more to reveal in the coming months, so stay tuned. Slay tuned. <laughs> Aren't y'all trying to be adorable? Back for Blood released to above average reviews, the bulk of the positivity stopping short of glowing reception. The story campaign and gameplay received solid marks across the board, scratching the Left 4 Dead itch in more ways than one with its faithful reimagining of the zombie I just wish they action. didn't change the fucking difficulty thing. The deck and looting mechanics. That was one of the but main so things that pissed me off. Overshadowed the various factors that did. Because it just it made the game Technical harder and unnecessarily. Plagued the game at launch, for example. Plus, it's like easy its mode was of fun with friends, legendary experience for those who difficulty. To play solo it's like what the, the fuck? limited progression system. The story <laughs> teammates usually proved inept during a mission. There was a story challenging moments further exacerbated the dismay in back for bloods one player offering the PVP focused swarm mode similarly lacked long term appeal when compared to the much coveted verses from let for dead. And of course, few were willing to set aside their fury over the mandatory online requirement. Turtle Rock later rectified a number of these issues in post-launch patches. Offline and solo progression finally entered the mix in a free December 2021 See, this is the problem with the, the fucking modern games. They try to fix too, what they know they did wrong and what people actually want in their the game later. And nightmare but later is too late. While such post -release Majority of people played it, didn't like it, power, got frustrated, and said fuck off. The annual pass. A $40 package that promised three separate expansions, each one comprised of new cleaners, special enemy types, weapons, and cards. For a time, the paid extras and free updates did little to sway the interest of existing players, evidenced by large quantities of Steam users flocking to Left 4 Dead 2. <laughs> yeah, Left 4 Dead numbers went up. <laughs> the former's resurgence resulted in concurrent player counts eclipsing back. It's like we're back, guys. We got occasion. another disappointment On to talk PC, about. At least, this trend seldom let up. Everybody asking Since everybody else, like you, did you just come from Back 4 Blood? <laughs> 
Kill all sons of bitches, right? Hopes were high that developers could maintain the newfound momentum even after shipping all of the scheduled annual pass offerings. The prospects of additional content releases seemed bright for a time, given Tencent's acquisition of Turtle Rock's parent company, Slamfire Inc., in December 2021. Why well, has Tencent used as good news? That's fucking naughty. Can we not? Well into the future. Cursory sales data suggested this wasn't beyond the realm of possibility. In March 2022, Turtle Rock and WB Games touted Back for Blood's 10 million player milestone, wearing the achievement like a badge of honor, though actual sales numbers eluded the conversation. How much Xbox Game Pass factored into the celebratory figure never garnered mention, but US tracking data from the NPD group revealed the zombie title Yeah, sold it, Back for Blood was out on Game Pass like day one. best selling new IP on consoles. So like, I'm pretty sure that's the only reason it still in the long run. like had Early any numbers. In 2023, Turtle Rock issued a statement announcing the end of production on Back for Blood. The AAA studio's relatively small size meant it lacked the resources to continue building new content for the apocalyptic adventure, especially since work had begun on a bigger, bolder, and better endeavor. Consequently, Back for Blood may dwell in Left for Dead's shadow in perpetuity a weight that could burden the brand should an opportunity for its return ever arise. God, could you imagine a Back for Blood 2? Fucking hell. <laughs> could you imagine? Thank you for watching. We'd like to take this time to thank, by name, the generous patrons who have pledged to our Hall of Fame reward tier. Alex Moretti. It'll literally just be like a reskin back for blood one. Tier. <laughs> Brock Pibiroto. Darirap Sigurdsson. Wow, look Get at these interesting areas that weren't in the base game. Jonathan. Kira uh, May. Landy K. Hayes. Uh, I think this is just Mario like... Mario Herrera. Milkshake. Yeah, it's just like... Patreons and shit. Alright. <laughs> yeah, fucking... Fucking tragic... Fucking tragic what happened to Back for Blood. What it could have been. It had so much fucking potential. It's just sad. It's like... <sighs> they literally just shot themselves in the foot when they released this game the way they did. It's sad. It's just fucking tragic. I can't. <clears throat> I can't with these studios hyping their shit so much. Especially when they're comparing it to older games that are still popular today. Still have an audience today. And your game, you hyped so much, you are surprised somehow that when you release it, that people are so upset at how the state of the game is that they literally go back to play Left 4 Dead. Or Left 4 Dead 2, I should say. I think that's what they said. Like, everybody was going back to Left 4 Dead 2. They were probably gossiping on verses, be like, Bitch, I just got done playing Back for Blood. I'm over here now. Like, I can't. I need... <laughs> They're, like, trading war stories about their Back for Blood experiences. <laughs> oh, man. Fucking hell. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.